Do you ever have that midday crash? Do late nights really affect your overall day? Well, then you probably need a nap. This video is all about the benefits of naps and why it is so important to get that midday 10 to 45 minute nap every single day. Let's get into it in today's episode. Now, before we get started, make sure to watch to the end because I'm gonna give you my favorite way to do a midday nap and wake up with amazing energy, get my productivity done, and make sure that that nap really doesn't have that groggy sleep inertia type feel. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you get notifications when videos just like this come out in the future. In America right now, most people have monophasic, meaning they sleep for about eight hours on end. But if you look at Mexico, they use a sleep siesta schedule where in the middle of the day, they take a 90 minute break. They stay up a little later at night and that creates sleep pressure. If you look back all the way to the industrial revolution ages, humans actually would get up in the middle of the night and they would do a few things. They'd meditate, they'd have sex. They would do these like spiritual, more intrinsic based tasks and then go back to sleep and finish out their sleep cycle. Now with our hectic lives, this monophasic sleep cycle seems to be the route that we should go. But the fact of the matter is often what we're seeing nowadays is people getting worse quality sleep and less sleep because they're trying to cram it all into one period of time. And that's where naps come in. And that's why the benefits of naps are so drastically important. And that's why this video is going to help you today learn why you should be taking the midday nap every single day. Although I do want to say before we get into the benefits that relying on naps to make up for your missed sleep or bad sleep or whatever it may be isn't something that you should do. You should never rely on anything and a nap is supplemental just like everything else. If you're changing your sleep schedule from a monophasic to a polyphasic, meaning you're going from that one long eight hour period to something like a siesta where you get six hours in the from 12, let's say till six, and then you get a 90 minute nap to finish out that last sleep cycle later in the day, that's completely fine as well. But if you're using this as a way to escape the traditional sleep cycle or to supplement because you'd get bad sleep every single night, it's not going to work the way that it should work. Let's dive into the benefits though, because there is so many and it's so important. Benefit number one is to recoup needed rest. A lot of times, and this is what I was just talking about, we think that we should just power our days on. We should just sludge, 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 get through it, have some more coffee, make sure that we can get through the day. But a 10 minute nap, a 20 minute nap, a 45 minute nap, these different naps can actually help give you that rest that you were missing from the night. They can make sure you get stage three and four. They can make sure that you can recover what you missed out on the night before. In fact, if you miss too much sleep, your brain literally can't detox. There's a system in our brain, just like the lymphatic system called the glymphatic system, which actually allows your brain to detoxify toxins and things that build up like plaque in the brain. So those are the things that a lot of times we associate with the cause of Alzheimer's and with the cause of all these different neurological issues. For instance, amyloid beta is one of the main ones that while sleeping actually gets flushed, but during the day, our brain really isn't taking care to push it out and to make sure it can detoxify. So benefit number one is recouping that rest and making sure your brain can actually detoxify and get back to its native, amazing, productive state. Benefit number two is better memory and learning. So you may be thinking that how can I have better learning from sleeping or taking a nap in the middle of the day? But the fact is our brains developed and our sleep developed primordially for a few reasons, to rest, to make sure that we could actually save energy overnight and not go out during a period in time which it was hard to get more food and to rehearse. And so in this instance, we're focusing on rehearsal. Our brains are so amazing, but when we're sleeping, they're not turned off. They're actually going into overdrive. They're learning all these different things that we never thought that we could learn just from looking at a textbook overnight. So what happens is when we're learning, we're getting about half of the learning done. The other half comes when your brain starts to rehearse during sleep, during your nap, during any of those unconscious periods of time. So using a nap in the middle of the day, if you're cramming for a test, if you need to learn something more, if you just wanna make sure that you're really solidifying the information that you're getting throughout the day, is such an easy and underrated thing to do. Go take that 10, 15, 20, 30 minute nap and your brain is gonna to start to rehearse that information. You might already realize that as soon as you wake up, you feel better, 
you know the information better, and you can perform better. Benefit number three is one you may not actually be familiar with. So by taking these longer naps, 90 minutes, an hour, somewhere around there, we can actually improve our emotional intelligence and allow the body to have a better positive response later in the day. According to the American Academy of Sleep Science, naps with REM sleep, meaning rapid eye movement, actually increase receptiveness to positive emotion. That means that by napping, you can kick your bad mood and jump into positivity. Although this may not be for everybody. If you're napping and the reason that you're napping is in order to improve productivity and make sure that you're alert and focused, this may actually increase sleep inertia because it is a longer nap so you're pushing in a REM sleep. But if you're trying to kick a bad mood, if you're trying to get over anxiety, something like that, a quick nap can catch up that brain and make sure that you're back in that positive emotional state of mind. Last but not least, we have improved energy for the rest of the day. So it's kind of interesting because what we just talked about with having better positive emotions doesn't lead to that good energy feeling that we're supposed to have. We're napping for different reasons. So the shorter naps, the 10 to 45 minute naps, on average are more for productivity. They're more for energy and alertness throughout the rest of the day. According to a study called a brief afternoon nap following nocturnal sleep restriction, which nap duration is most recuperative, they found that actually the 10 minute nap allowed participants to have benefits up to as long as 155 minutes. The 20 minute nap was associated with improvements emerging 35 minutes after napping and lasting up to 125 minutes. But the 30 minute nap actually impaired alertness and performance immediately after napping, which is called sleep inertia, although it did show that they had benefits lasting up to 155 minutes after the nap. Now, what that means is that you can use these naps in different ways, short naps, longer naps, to to allow your body to actually get energy and skip that cup of coffee. Although, let's get into the bonus. The one thing that I wanted to give you, the way that I like to take a nap and wake up with more energy, more productivity, more alertness than I had prior. It's called a caffeine nap. Now, if you watch the video, the benefits of coffee where I talked about five benefits of coffee. I hinted at it, but one thing that I really like to do is drink coffee throughout the whole day. And one of my favorite times to do it is at lunch right before my afternoon nap. What I'll do is I'll have one cup, about 100 milligrams of caffeine, and I'll drink it prior to napping. Well, this may sound weird, in the Harvard Health Publisher, they actually encourage the use of caffeine, or at least trying to use caffeine, based on a small Japanese study where participants took a bit of caffeine prior to napping and woke up with more energy, less sleep inertia, and the ability to be productive for the rest of the day. That's it for this quick video on the benefits of napping, why you need to nap more, how you can nap more. That's it for this video on the benefits of napping. If it helped you in any way, make sure to press like, comment below with your favorite time to nap, how you like to nap, what your period and duration of napping is. And if this video helped you at all, please make sure to subscribe so that I can make more content like this in the future. I want to thank you for watching again and have a kick-ass day.